Hey everyone, welcome to another Screenwriting Tips. My name is Tony D. Today we're going to talk about how to write a parody movie. All right, uh, comedy, parody is a big thing, and uh, there have been a, a ton of parody movies over the years that haven't really worked because it's all about the source material, right? So if you don't have a good source material, chances are the parody's not going to stand by itself. The other problem with it is things have been so parodied over the years, uh, it's hard to do in enough time before the next wave of popular thing happens. So right now, uh, as I'm making this video, Game of Thrones is down to their last three, uh, I think we got two more episodes. And uh, after that, it's over. So right now, Game of Thrones is the hottest thing ever. But in two weeks, it'll be over. And probably about a week or two after that, everyone will have moved on from Game of Thrones. And uh, so if you were going to do a parody, you the timing of it would have to be, you would have had to hit the Game of Thrones movie parody somewhere. You would have probably had to write it like, three years ago and hope that it got in production in time to be released now. Uh, now would be the perfect time or rather, you know, probably after the last episode airs, right after that would be the perfect time to do a Game of Thrones parody. Um, and the thing about doing a parody that specific uh, in the case of Game of Thrones is it doesn't give you a lot of room to parody anything else. So Game of Thrones is pretty specific. You could probably work in other fantasy parodies, but it probably wouldn't be as big as Game of Thrones, right? Um, you know, back in the day when The Sopranos was big, you could have done a mafia parody. But again, it's the same thing about timing. Like you could do it now, and some people would get it, but it's not the hot thing. So the parody movies are partly, a lot of weight goes on the subject matter. Now sometimes, you know, uh, for instance, in the worst one of the worst movies I ever saw was Loaded Weapon 2, which is a parody of Lethal Weapon, and it was done by National Lampoon and starred Samuel Jackson and um, Emilio Estevez. And it's, and it's, to me, one of the worst movies. I couldn't sit through it. I've only walked out of two movies. Loaded Weapon 2 and Second Sight with John Larroquette. Both brutal movies, so bad. Uh, and really, Second Sight is kind of a parody of Ghostbusters, kind of. But to me, that movie made so little sense, it wasn't even a, a movie. So, if you're going to set out to do a comedy parody type movie I think the best strategy is to pick a a broader category than just one particular movie and then within that you can parody a lot of things so if you look at a movie like Anchorman uh, it has its own plot but within that movie you can parody anything news related and that'll work and then that way, if the parody can't sustain itself for more than a scene, uh, you can just move on to the next comedy bit or, you know, move the plot forward or whatever. So, part of doing this comedy is to be flexible enough to kind of stick and move and get to the next comedy bit. Uh, because when you're writing any comedy, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to make the payoffs bigger and bigger uh, while at the same time moving the story forward but it's a it's a very precarious balance because a lot of times you can get caught up in the comedy and that can grind moving the story forward it could it could grind it to a halt um, one of the movies that I think sort of does that but it's still a pretty good movie is if you watch um, what is it called now? It's Wet Hot American Summer? No, that that's not the name. It's the one it's the one with like 
Paul Rudd and the guys from the state, John Benjamin. Uh, you know what I mean. It's the it's a it's a summer camp movie. I can't think of the title, but it's like big hot wet American summer or something. They did two movies, but the problem, and and not that the movie's bad. It's it's really funny, but part of the problem with the movie is it does grind to a halt with some of the comedy bits. Like they kind of go off on a tangent on some of these bits and never quite get back on course, and then they kind of course correct, and then the movie just sort of ends. So, the balance really, I think one of the movies that had the perfect balance, of course, is Animal House. That kind of had the perfect balance of parody and comedy, uh, you know, but it still moved the plot forward. It, because it was all about the frat and destroying the frat or saving the frat or whatever. Um, so, if you, if, if you keep, if you stick to a relatively simple plot that works within the parody of what you're trying to do, I think that's probably your best strategy. Now, doing a parody movie is not something you probably want to do as a spec script because it has a very short shelf life. Um, despite the fact it could be very funny, obviously if you did a Game of Thrones parody movie, it'd be, it would be dead in a month uh, as of this shooting probably probably be dead on arrival really no one's going to want to shoot a game of thrones parody movie you know to come out next year when everybody's forgotten about game of thrones um so even if you broaden that to fantasy you run the risk of well has fantasy gone out of vogue has the, has the, has the genre gone out of vogue Probably one of the movies you could do now is you could do a superhero parody movie. Superheroes are kind of at their peak right now. Avengers is big. Disney is probably going to do God knows how many movies. They just they just announced three more superhero movies in the MCU. Um, and they're going to have ones from, uh, you know, other companies that tie into the MCU, like the Spider-Man movies. So... You're looking at, you know, three or four years of lead time. You could potentially write a superhero parody movie. The downside of that is superheroes have been so overdone uh, over the years. There are a ton of those scripts floating around. <laughs> I know because I have one of them. Um, and I've been pushing, you know, super frat for like, gosh, over 10 years. So, you know, that, that sort of very tiny subgenre is pretty well stocked. It, it's, you know, again, you want to keep it nice and broad. So if you did a fantasy parody movie, you probably could sell it down the road. You know, you, you, could, you could keep sort of hawking it and then hopefully if uh, the stars align and, it, and, it, uh, and maybe another serious fantasy show, I mean, there's still other fantasy shows out there in that milieu like Vikings um, and there'll probably be uh, there's going to be the uh, Game of Thrones prequels um, you could probably also do I mean Spaceballs still holds up that's a Star Wars parody and that's one of the reasons Spaceballs kind of holds up it, it's you know they're still doing Star Wars movies and it's kind of all the same and that's kind of what uh, uh, Spaceballs, you know, says in the movie, it's a, it's this big franchise, and they make fun of it, and they make fun of the merchandise and all that good stuff. And even Yoda's in it, and they have a parody of Yoda and Spaceballs. So that's probably the example of the most, one of the most enduring parody movies is Spaceballs. But that, of course, is parodying the biggest movie franchise in history. Basically, um, doesn't get much bigger than Star Wars. So, you know, in terms of other parodies, you know, you could try Western, you could probably try spy stuff, although spy stuff is sort of dead. Uh, there was a time you probably could have done an X-Files parody, uh, but that's, that's sort of behind us. My advice is not to write a parody screenplay at all. Um, if you're going to do a parody thing, I would limit, probably limit it to a short film if you really want to do a parody. 
Um, back in the day, we used to do a lot of comedy sketches. Commercial parodies were big. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. But that was back in the day when people watched more network TV and the commercials we tended to parody were ones that everybody saw. And these days it gets harder and harder for people to see, you know, commercials. So even if you take some of the biggest commercials out there, like uh, Progressive from Flow um, and a few others, there are still people who, they don't even watch TV with commercials in it. They watch, uh, you know, download pay-per-view stuff. They don't even see commercials. Or they watch stuff on YouTube and they see those horrible five-second commercials that they have about everything. So, uh, doing a commercial parody, even that, you know, it's gotten tough. Part of the other factor is everything is so fragmented. Uh, as my friend uh, CB uh, often says, the, the various, I don't know what you'd call them, uh, factions of culture uh, and pop culture are being fragmented. So, you know, you've got people who are still watching network TV, but then you got people who are watching Netflix, other people who are watching like FX Now and specific channels. I mean, even for myself, I watch very little network TV. I've got a short list of shows and that's it. I pretty much stick to those. Um, you know, and I don't watch, you know, I don't watch like Good Morning America every morning like a lot of people do and uh, sitcoms. I, 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 I can't even think of a sitcom I really watch other than uh, What We Do in the Shadows, which is amazing by the way. You should watch it. Um, other, other than that, very few TV shows for me, but then again, I've aged out of the demographic. So, but uh, most most kids aren't aren't watching TV or even movies. So, they're hard to appeal to too. So, if you're going to parody something and, and appeal to a younger audience, you need to parody, you know, like TikTok, and that is tough uh, because you're going to parody something that's part of the internet. And then you're going to put it in a medium that they're not going to watch. So it has to be parodied, parry, parodied in such a way that you can create bite-sized chunks that you could then put on the internet so they'll see it and then hopefully go see the movie as a whole. So it's tough. So my advice, stay away from parodies, uh, parody movies, uh, you know, unless you, unless you keep them really short and do like short videos on YouTube. Um, you know, stick to broader comedies. Uh, even comedies right now are tough to do because who's doing comedies? Everybody's offended by everything. Um, so until that sort of breaks, uh, even just doing a comedy is tough right now because basically everybody's tearing down everything everywhere. <laughs> So it's dark days, screenwriters, dark days. But there you have it. That's that's how you write a parody. You basically just find something super, super popular and uh, make fun of it in the, you know, if you look at Spaceballs, they just tear it to pieces, right? It's just the most ridiculous, crazy movie ever. And they put in every trope and they just make fun of it. I mean, that, you, you can't have... You can't hold back when you're doing comedy, especially a parody. You really have to, you know, go after everything about it. You, you, you can't leave someone unscathed. If you pull your punch, then it's not going to be as good. So, that's it for now. My name is Tony D. See you next time. Check me out on Patreon, The Web Comic Factory, and Superfrat.